text this evening <coughs> is born from above. Born from above. Hallelujah. And before we get into the Word of God, I want to expound a little bit here. You know, born from above, as each and every one of us are as Christians, I want to remind you, each and every one of us, that Christianity is a relationship between the Father, our Father, and His family. It is not, not a religion. It is a personal relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. It is such a relationship uh, that you, you can just walk down and have a meal with him. You know, no holes barred. He's our friend. Hallelujah. Well, Christianity is being made a new creation in Christ Jesus. It is being born from above. And it is receiving the nature and life of God. It is being united with our Lord Jesus Christ. So in Romans chapter 6, beginning in verse 4, of course we begin to read the Word of God, it starts talking about baptism. because We just had a baptism, didn't we? In Romans chapter 6, beginning in verse 4, the Word of God says, Therefore we, talking about us, are buried with him by baptism into death, like that as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we... Who's he talking to there? All right. We also should walk in newness of life. So the Lord's saying here, we should also, just like Jesus Christ, just like Jesus Christ, walk in newness of life. Verse 5. For if we, talking to us, have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall all be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen? Amen. Well, I mean, a lot of you people that just went through the baptism. Hallelujah. Because you see, my dear people, we are united with our Lord Jesus Christ in resurrection life. Okay. In other words, that means that our heart was to be recreated. Okay. Now, because you see, my dear people, we are a new creation. We are new creatures in Christ Jesus. In other words, we have literally been born from above. We have been born from above. Okay. Now, if we turn to the prophet Ezekiel, prophet Ezekiel, in chapter 36, Chapter 26, verse 26, 36, verse 26. Chapter 36, verse 26. The Word of God says, this is the prophet Ezekiel speaking about a prophecy, of course, to the church. And it says, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit. Amen? Okay. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments, and do them. So you mean, see, my dear people, we are to have a new heart. Okay. That means that our heart according to the prophecy to the church, was to be recreated or born from above. When God speaks of the heart, what does he speak about? He speaks of the spirit, does he not? The word heart in the Bible normally means the the spirit, the real man. In other words, our spirit man. Okay. Now we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Thank you, Father. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17. The Word of God says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 
In other words, we are new creatures in a new creation, and the new creation is born from above. Now you may say, but Ron, I've heard you say that before. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. My dear people, have you allowed the old things to pass away? Have you allowed the old things to pass away? Have you allowed all things to become new? Maybe this is the reason why the Lord keeps going over and over this particular verse. You see? Because He wants all, all old things to pass away and He wants all things to become new. Why? Because we are new creatures in Christ Jesus. We are born from above. My dear people, we are new creatures in a new creation. Can you get a hold of that? We are in a new creation. Brand new creation. A new creation that is born from above. My dear people, we are to be ruled by our Lord Jesus Christ, not by Satan. We, I'm going to repeat that. We are to be ruled by the Lord Jesus Christ, not by Satan. Why? Because we belong into the new creation. We have been bought and paid for by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we are to be ruled by the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, uh, by the Word of God and not our flesh. Not our flesh. Not by sense knowledge. Not by what we see. Not by what we hear. But by the Word of God. We were before the new birth a child of wrath. But we are, by the new nature, a child of God. We, each and every one of us in here, are a true child of God. We are a son or a daughter of God. God created us in the beginning. How many of you know that? God created each and every one. In other words, He created man in the beginning. But my dear people, what He's doing right now, every day, is He is recreating us through a renewing of the mind. You still with me? He is recreating us every day. How? Through a renewing of the mind. Now let's take a look at John's Gospel, chapter 3. Let's look at the new birth. Let me show you something here. John's Gospel, chapter 3. Beginning in verse 3. This is where our Lord Jesus Christ is talking to Nicodemus, the Pharisee, the religious leader. And Jesus, there was Nicodemus had asked uh, Jesus uh, how he can be born again. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, Well, how can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? In other words, the first thing that came against Nicodemus, of course, was sense knowledge. What he could see and what he could hear. Well, how could that work? Wouldn't it? Okay. Well, we understand that. He didn't know the Word of God then. Okay. Hallelujah. Verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. Now you notice in your Bible, at least in mine, in the King James, the word Spirit there has got a large S. That's God's Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. You may want to put a little circle around that. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 6. For that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that uh, which is born of the Spirit, look, big S, is Spirit, little s. My dear people, we're the little s. <laughs> Amen? How many of you like being the little s? Ooh, glory, huh? Amen? Hallelujah. Well, Father, we just thank you that you're the big S. Amen. The big Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost. Then he says, Marvel not uh, that I have said unto thee, ye must be born again. Verse 8. 
The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not now canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Now, you, my dear people, <clears throat> first of all, when we look at the new birth, we all realize, as born again Christians, that we must be born from above, don't we? Okay. But you see, my dear people, we are born of the Word and of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost. We, but we are recreated by the will of the Father. Now, if we look at verse 8 again, if you'll study that, I'll read it to you also in the Amplified here. In verse 8, the Word of God says, The wind blows or breathes where it wills. And though you hear its sound, yet you neither know where it comes from nor where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. In other words, if we take the first sentence and the last sentence, it says, uh, the wind blows where it wills. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. The big S. The Holy Ghost. The Lord. Okay. So you see, my dear people... People do not realize that we are recreated in, by the will of God. In other words, we are a wanted child. Did you hear me? We are a wanted child. God wants us, and He wanted us even before we were born again. Because, you see, my dear people, we are born from above. Now, if you look at James chapter 1, you see where I'm coming from here. James chapter 1. Hallelujah. James chapter 1, beginning in verse 17. I want you to see this. James chapter 1, beginning with verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Hallelujah. Did you hear me? Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. So, my dear people, if you're not getting good gifts, something's wrong. Huh? That's the reason why our Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, The thief cometh to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. Because you see, my dear people, every good gift that, uh, and perfect gift is from above. Then he says, And cometh down from the Father of lights, uh, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Now look, notice here verse 18. Again, I have the King James. But he says, Of his own will. Of his own will. Talking about God. Say that with me. Of his own will. Begat he us. Of his own will. Begat he us. How? With the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of His creatures. So you may see, my dear people, we are recreated by the Spirit through the Word. You still with me? He begat us by His will through the Spirit, or I mean through the Word of truth. So in other words, we are recreated by the Spirit, big S, through the Word of God. Now, you remember the message about the bread of life? In other words, so how do we get recreated through the Word of God? We've got to eat the Word. We've got to eat the Word. <clears throat> We've got to eat the Word. Why? Well, I'm going to turn to, turn to here to First uh, Peter, chapter 1. First Peter, chapter 1. Thank you, Father. Here we are. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 23. The Word of God says, speaking about us, it says, it says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. In other words, our seed from the Father that we would, uh, is incorruptible. Why? Because it's by the Word of God. The Word of God is incorruptible. So we were born again by an incorruptible seed, our Father. Amen? Okay. 
So being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Because you see, my dear people, <clears throat> and I want you to pay attention now, no man recreates himself. No man recreates himself. It is purely the work of God Almighty. And that's what I'm trying to show you here tonight. By His will, He begat us uh, through the word of truth. So what I'm pointing point out to you here this evening is, 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 uh, is uh, flesh cannot help flesh. Do you understand? Flesh cannot help flesh. Sense knowledge cannot help sense knowledge. You all remember the message about sense knowledge? Sense knowledge cannot help sense knowledge. Flesh cannot help flesh. Why? Because we are a three-part being. My dear people, we are a three-part being. And I know you've heard it, but you're going to hear it and hear it until you've got it in you so much that you can stand up here and teach it yourself. But do you know that each and every one of us is supposed to know the Word of God that we can teach it to? That's right. And you're going to. <coughs> Hallelujah. I can see about 50 churches here. <laughs> oh, glory. Charlie, you feel like a pastor? Huh? <laughs> But, my dear people, that's how it's supposed to work. Huh? You don't think the disciples are still sitting in church with Jesus, do you? Are they still sitting there? Huh? 2,000 years later? Are they? No. Nope. Bible says, go ye. Go ye. Okay. <clears throat> we are a three-part being. Spirit, soul, and a body. I know you've heard this. I'm going to tell you again. Three-part being. Our spirit man is instantly, instantaneously born again. How? Through the power of God, through the Holy Ghost, and through the Word. We just saw it, didn't we? He begat us through the Word of Truth. He's recreating us through the Word of Truth. Okay. But our soul, our mind, has to be renewed to what? The Word of God. The Word of God. And our bodies, well, that's just where we live. That's our house. So you see, that's the reason why the Word of God says we walk by faith, not by sight. In other words, we walk by the Word, not by what we see or what we hear. Why? Because flesh cannot help flesh. Sense knowledge cannot help sense knowledge. Only the thing that can help the spirit man is spirit. What is it? Spirit. The Word is spirit. Are you with me? The Word of God is spirit. Does everybody know that? The Word of God is spirit. That's the reason why when you preach the Word, then you begin to get fruit of the Spirit. It is the Word that produces the fruit. Where? In the Spirit. Where's the Spirit? It's in you. It's in me. It's in us. You see? That's the reason you've heard me talk about the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5.22. The love, joy, peace, long-suffering, temperance, gentleness, and faith. My dear people, you cannot learn how to have love. You cannot learn how to have faith. You can't grit your teeth long enough to have love. You can't grit your teeth long enough or dig your heels deep enough in the ground to have faith. You can't learn it and you can't earn it because it's a fruit of the Spirit. It is a fruit of the Spirit. So you see, flesh cannot help flesh. In other words, why? Well, let's look at here at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. What's the right scripture here? Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2, beginning in verse 4. The Word of God says, But God, who is rich in mercy for His great love, wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sin, that's when we were spiritually dead. How many of you know that we used to be dead? Yeah. That's right, okay. But he hath, past tense, quickened us together with Christ. In other words, he has made us alive with Christ. By grace we are saved. And he hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In other words, you remember the message? We were to sit down. We were to get in to rest. Why? Because the word is Spirit. It is the Word that sets the captives free. You still with me? It is the Word of God that sets the captives free. 
It is the sword of the Spirit that sets the captives free. It is the Word of God, not flesh, not sense knowledge. It is the Word, the Word, the Word that we are recreated by. And that's the reason why the Word of God continually exhorts us and teaches us and shows us to renew our minds to the Word of God. My dear people, you cannot sit in a church or in a group of people or anybody else and minister flesh to flesh. It won't work. It won't work. I had a good friend of mine and, and bless this guy. His name was Brother Bobby. I love him. <coughs> we worked with him. We worked with him in, in, in Louisiana. You remember Brother Bobby, Mom? Had a great big old hotel he bought. And he took care of winos off the streets. He took care of winos. But he didn't know the word. He just loved them. You know what? He never got nobody set free. Ever. And the end, the place closed up again. And he fought it tooth and nail. Because you see, he tried to minister him flesh to flesh. It don't work. Sense knowledge to sense knowledge. I'll tell you my experiences and you tell me yours. It does not work work. Why? Because the Word of God is spirit. It is a sword of the spirit and it destroys the enemy. My dear people, we are a spiritual man. A spiritual being. The Word of God is spirit. It comes from a heaven. It comes from above where we're born from. It is spirit. I mean, know that God is spirit. God is a spirit. You better believe it. And he wrote it down through a spirit. The Holy Ghost to, to feed to us his Word. It's spirit. That's the reason why the Word of God exhorts us to, 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 to eat the bread of life, uh, to eat the Word of God. Why? Because it's spiritual food. It is spiritual food. And you, if you don't eat it, to, you won't survive. How many of you can go for a, a month without eating uh, 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 beans and potatoes or whatever? I don't care, whatever. We can't, can we? Huh? <clears throat> well, if you have a school, why would... <laughs> huh? Might get... Yeah, well, you see. Yes, amen. But I want to point out to you was we cannot live this life without natural food. We cannot exist without natural food. My dear people, we cannot exist without spiritual food either. We cannot exist very long without water to drink. We cannot exist without the Holy Ghost to drink. That is what the water is in the Bible. It's the Holy Ghost. The water, I mean the Word, the Word exhorts us to be watered with the Word. Did you know that? That's right. So you see, my dear people, we have to constantly be renewed to the Word of God. And the Lord keeps, we keep saying, exhort them, teach them, show them how to pick up that sword, how to pick up that sword, how to pick up that sword. Why? Because, my dear people, we can't pick it up for everybody all the time. There's not enough of us. I've got a friend of mine. He's a missionary in Guatemala. And they had a catastrophe. This volcano come down and there was 5,000 people knocking on his front door. Oh, God, pray, pray for me. How can you pray for 5,000 people at the same time? You know what they did? They drug him out in the street and about killed him. Trying to get him to pray for him because he was anointed. My dear people, everybody in this room is anointed. Everybody in this room is anointed and it's time to pick up the sword and take your place in Christ Jesus. We've got to stand and be an army. How many of you know? How many of you, how many of you have ever seen an army with one man? Huh? Has anybody ever seen an army with one man? Could we have won the Second World War with one man? It's impossible. I don't care who he is. I don't even know who they were, but <laughs> I'm afraid to say. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> God, don't make no dummies, you know. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> but what, you understand where I'm coming from? Huh? My dear people, we've got to learn the Word of God. Why? And I know I've, I've touched on this at times, but I'm telling you, my dear people, the Lord has told us time after time, we go and we lay before God and we pray every morning and He's told us, my, oh God, perilous times are coming. They're on the way. Perilous times. He said, what about the rapture? The rapture is coming, but my dear people, we're going to go through perilous times. We're going through what the Bible is going to call calls gross darkness. Gross darkness. My pe dear people, we've got to learn to pick up the sword and wield the Word of God, which is a sword of the Spirit, to survive. Not only for ourselves, but to help one another. Don't you understand? Why? Because we are His body. Together, we're, we're His body. Separate, we're nothing. 
separate. We're going to, you won't stand. <coughs> you won't stand. You might you get to heaven a little quicker. <laughs> you see? <laughs> I got off the... But praise God. What I want to point out to you is he, He's raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. Why? Because that's where the battle's at. Did you notice what? We're sitting together in one accord with our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because we're all of one accord. We're one body. You see? Hallelujah. Verse 7. That in the ages to come, He, meaning God, might show the exceeding richness of His grace uh, in His kindness uh, towards us through Christ Jesus. Well, my dear people, that was, this is written 2,000 years ago. This reason he's talking about the ages. It says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. Then it, and the, word, the word says, And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. And you know something, my dear people? The more I study the Word of God, the more I seek God, when that Word says, says that it is a gift of God, the more I'm finding out that it's not only that his, his salvation is a gift, but so is His grace and even the faith. Everything. Everything. Grace, unearned, unmerited favor. Salvation by the blood of the Lamb. And the faith is what? A fruit of the Spirit. It's all a gift. All of it. Verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. In other words, God wants the glory, doesn't he? He wants the glory, not man. And verse 10, for we are his workmanship. We are what? We are what? His workmanship. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. My dear people, we are his workmanship. The main difficulty has been that the the body of Christ through the years has had a, a sense of unworthiness. The churches in the past have instilled in them a, a, a sense of unworthiness. But my dear people, uh, but it's, it's because of our unrenewed minds. It has in turn robbed the church of faith and fellowship with the Father what He created us to be to begin with. Why does that happen? My dear people, it's due to ignorance of who we are in Christ Jesus. Of who we are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Turn with me please to Ephesians chapter 4. I think it's one page over. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4 beginning with verse uh, 22. The Word of God says that ye, beginning verse 22 of chapter 4, that ye, who's he talking to here? He's talking to us. He's talking to every one of us. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Verse 24, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. My dear people, verse 22 is there the same. First of all, he's talking to us and he's saying, put off, put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. You know what the Word of God is saying there, my dear people? It is saying, put off the old man. Put off the old conversation. Put off your past. You don't have any past. Why? Because you've been bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. When you start talking about your past, it is Satan. It's a, it's a, it's a strategy of Satan. He's trying to get you to come into agreement with him. It's called the prayer of agreement so that he can come and put Jesus Christ back on the cross to shame him. Did you know?